Welcome back to BWO Daily, your source for news in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling from you boys at Busted Wide Open. My name is Nick Howell. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. And Nick, you may recall a couple of months ago that Renee Young, now known as Renee Paquette because she's no longer with WWE, but she contracted the coronavirus and she actually announced it on Twitter and it wasn't really... Mm, appreciated that much by WWE. She was recently interviewed by Sports Illustrated, and she actually she admitted it. She was like, yeah, it was not well-received by WWE. Apparently, they said, you know, you shouldn't have posted it. We wish you'd given us a heads up. It was bad for PR and whatnot. So uh, apparently, their initial response was, yeah, sorry you're sick, but you shouldn't have done that because it makes us look bad. And apparently, she felt a little bit slighted by that, in her words. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, she doesn't want to sound like she's crapping on WWE, but she did say she was a little slighted. Uh, she didn't feel like anyone was concerned that she got sick, and that bothered her. Yeah. As you can understand, as, as it would, uh, given the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic and your large you know, billion-dollar company is kind of like, yeah, yeah, you're sick. We're more worried about how it looks for us, so shush, shush, shush. So she was, uh, she was talking about that with Sports Illustrated. She did say she doesn't hold any grudges about it. She says the show goes on. Now they're working at the Amway Center. They're essentially doing the best that they can now, now doing the proper tests. I think that was something that should have been implemented from the beginning, she said, since everything that's gone down and however many people ended up getting sick, now it feels like a much safer environment. Even when she was there for SummerSlam, she was definitely less concerned about it, uh, it knowing that everyone in the building had been properly tested with the nose swab and whatnot. Because as you recall... WWE was not testing with the nose swab. They were testing with just taking people's temperatures as they walked into the building. And as a result, they had an outbreak. Uh, the rumors were the outbreak was over 30 people at one point. So yeah. a lot of people got it. Uh, Renee initially in the, in the breakout said, I don't want to travel. I don't want to go anywhere. So she stayed home for a lot of it because they had other announcers and, uh, and interviewers on site in, in several different places, Sarah Shriver and Kayla Braxton. That being said, of course, they were in the front lines. Kayla, you may recall, caught the damn thing twice so and this is of course we know that because she said so one of the few that got through wwe before they put the lockdown and said no one else can can say if they if they catch this thing so they're only the ones that we know about right um renee also went on to say that she was shocked ww was deemed an essential business in this so uh so yeah so that honestly nick i have to say i i think that she's being very generous in that circumstance, given the fact that, you know, she worked for a company that basically took the least amount of precautions it possibly could while being given uh, a ton of leeway by the government to continue operating when it was very much obviously not an essential business, but a, you know, a source of entertainment that to its credit, we were entertained by during this. And so, that, you know, while it was very nice to have, I certainly couldn't argue it was essential. No, no, not at all. And the fact so, that we the fact that we had several people get we had we had to get to a point where the same person got it twice before we started really getting serious and started uh, you know and, and by getting serious I mean shutting down PR from individuals and taking testing seriously yeah uh, yeah they had yeah. A, they had to get quite a few people sick to actually take the testing seriously and that is disappointing but as she said at least they're doing it right now and you're seeing stars like Roman Reigns. Uh, coming back now that they feel a little bit safer. Being there, Riddick Moss is coming back now that he feels a little safer. There, Sami Zayn, Kyle O'Reilly. So, Kyle O'Reilly, right. So now that now that the things are being handled much better there, it seems like it's on the up and up. It's just too bad that we had to go through what we went through, and it's too bad she had to go through what she went through in order to get to this point. But the real question is, what's coming next for Renee Young? Uh, she felt that she she didn't feel like there was any one particular day where she could say, "I'm going to quit WWE." But that getting diagnosed with the virus and having backstage canceled on the same day mm, really made her think about her options. Yeah. She felt like she'd reached the peak of her career with WWE. She didn't want to go back to being a backstage interviewer. She felt like talking smack would have been a step backwards. So she wanted to figure out what was coming next. And that's why she did what she did. Uh, Moxley was actually interviewed on the Busted Open radio podcast. They're, they're not busted wide open. They're just, right. they're just busted open. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, they're diet. Busted right. wide open. Ex right. Exactly. Yeah. They just happen to have Bully Ray on there, which, yeah. I mean, come on. Come on. Um, but on that show, he said that she already has people knocking down the door, offering her the keys to the castle. Apparently, her agent's phone is ringing off of the hook, 
However, she's now taking a bit of a break, decompressing. Uh, that being said, she does, in, in the Sports Illustrated interview, she did say she has a no-compete clause going and that it might be longer than 90 days. She says it's for a significant period of time. So it might be a while before we see Renee anywhere else. But she's got a cookbook coming out next year. She's talking to Joe Rogan on Twitter. She's trying to be Lady Rogan. Like She's setting herself up for a lot of things. Uh, Moxley said she has a strong wrestling fan base and a strong connection to wrestling. He expects her to always have some kind of foot dipped in the water with wrestling. But because she has so many other things she's good at and she's into, like NHL cooking and fashion, who knows where she could end up. Yeah. So the world at this point is her oyster. Love it, and I'm over the moon happy for her. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You love to see you love to see good people do good. So yeah. uh, also people doing things. Gabe Sapolsky is admitting he's not doing things. He's done being an independent booker and promoter. You may remember Sapolsky as the founder and runner of Evolve, which was just bought by WWE in July, along with his entire tape library. Uh, they bought Evolve. Uh, WWE bought Evolve, Full Impact Pro and Dragon Gate USA from Sapolsky and his, uh, his partner and co-owner, uh, Sal Hamoey, uh, back in July. So they've got all of that now. Apparently, uh, they did not, however, buy their streaming service, WWN, and, and uh, Samoey and Eddie Kingston are still running shows on that. Eddie Kingston actually has a show coming up on September 27th on WWN, Eddie Kingston's Grindhouse. So if you're interested, you could check that out. Uh, but Sapolsky, hey, as far hey, as... AEW. Aren't you guys in need of a streaming service? Don't don't you have Eddie Kingston on the payroll now? Hmm. I two mean, plus that two. Could, that could that could be something. That could be something there. That'd be. I mean, obviously a ways in the future, but interesting. You you'd think that a company like AEW would want to have a bigger streaming service or start their own, but maybe they could hop on the back. I don't know. Lots of stuff there we don't know, but right. we do know that Sapolsky did step down because he said when he had was forced to take a break because of COVID, he really reassessed his life and was like, I am burned out on running these shows. He's like, I really love doing the bell to bell aspect, developing talent, but man, I hate running an indie wrestling company. It's just, it has, it's lost the luster. So he's going to go, he's been working as a consultant for NXT. It's expected that he'll continue to do that, but it looks like his time with Evolve is done. Yeah. Uh, and indie wrestling in general. He's not going to start a new promotion or anything. So he's he's done. Going to NXT. Pour one out for Evolve. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can find it all. You can. It's, they'll be streaming it more and more on WWE Network. So they're already showing some cool matches from there. And they've got a huge library with tons of great matches. So yeah. hopefully they put more of that out there. A lot of their current stars came through Evolve. So hopefully they take advantage. Uh, speaking of people that came through Evolve, Keith Lee. Keith Lee. Stole a move. <gasps> It was a, a had a fan ask him online. You may recall last week on Raw, he gave Dolph a big kind of like dipping slam. Well, that looked a hell of a lot like uh, Indy and New Japan and Ring of Honor and AEW. He's all over the place. Yeah. Uh, uh, wrestler for hire, Jeff Cobb, currently working a lot with New Japan on New Japan Strong. Uh, it looked a lot like his tour of the islands finishing move. And a fan actually asked Keith on Twitter, Hey, dude, wasn't that Jeff Cobb's tour of the island? And Keith said, ah, 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 nah, boss, nah. Cobbzilla's slam goes the other direction and has a full stop. Mm. I'd never steal my boy's move. I call that the Jeff Brown slam. He's a former wrestler in Texas. He used it when I first started. I was always a fan, so when he retired, I started using it to pay homage. And uh, actually, Jeff Cobb even saw the tweet and responded, and that's why you are my favorites, one of my favorites, even when you are pouncing me or spirit bombing me or any physicality towards me. <laughs> so still a lot of love between our dudes, yeah. Jeff Cobb and Keith Lee. No, Keith Lee did not steal that move. That is Keith Lee's version of the Jeff Brown slam. Yeah. Fantastic. I, I love I love that kind of love in wrestling right there, man. Same. And it um, looked fantastic. Like, oh, my oh, God, he's got. So now we've got spirit bomb, the pounce, and he's got the slam. Oh, boy. And somewhere, Big Bang Catastrophe still hanging right. out there right. somewhere. For now. Uh, for now. But, uh, but yeah, I love seeing that. Uh, it was always cool to watch those two guys wrestle. We saw them wrestle with Ricochet, actually, at one point, mm. and that was awesome. So, mm, love the love. Today, we have to wish a happy birthday to Tracy Smothers. Uh, talk about a journeyman. The guy's been everywhere. You may remember him as a tag team with Steve Armstrong uh, over in WCW. Uh, yep. Big guy, big Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Nick, you love Smoky yep. Mountain Wrestling. He was a champion over there yep. for a minute. 
Uh, so yeah, happy birthday, Tracy Smothers. He's 57 years old today. And rest in peace, Hana Kimura. She would have been 23 years old today. Just 23. But unfortunately, obviously, as, as you all know, she passed away uh, from suicide earlier this year, took her own life because of cyberbullying. So this is our time to stop and say happy birthday to Hana Kimura. And everybody, be excellent to each other. Yeah. Let's spread the love, people. Yeah. Not the hate. Yeah. And that is the news. Or as I like to say, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Just that's that's just don't be a dick. That's that's Any the less Disney way of saying it. Thank you, Nick. Yes. In, you just don't be a dick. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Ian D-bad. Dangerous. That's Rest our, in peace. Uh, D-bad. Kimura. That's how we do it here on the on the Bustle Wide Open show. D-bad. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a dick. Yes, exactly. We need to make a t-shirt out of that, actually. D-bad. Yeah, uh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Rest in peace, Hanukkah Kimura. Happy birthday to Tracy Smothers. And thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of BWO Daily. Make sure you pound that big red subscribe button and set your notification to all so you get notified anytime we put up a brand new episode. Come join us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash busted wide open where we do our live streams on Tuesday. Tuesdays and Saturdays, and mm-hmm. much more, including uh, pay-per-view recaps and all kinds of good stuff coming soon. Uh, and you can find our Discord community and all of our social medias down in the description below. But my name is Nick Howell. You can find me on Twitter at Data Center Dude, And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. You can find me on Twitter at Sir Ian Dangerous. And we will see you guys next time.